Hello fellow RC fellows and fellettes and welcome to the video. This time we're all about general maintenance so here's the top 10-ish things to do to keep your RC looking and running in tip-top shape and to save you some hard-earned moolah as well. Let's go straight to the most important one. Avoid salt water. <coughs> Nothing kills RC cars better than salt water. Every metal part will rust and seize, and even waterproof electronic components will corrode if salt is left on them to dry. If you only take one thing away from this list, make it this one. Avoid salt water. Also a note on fresh water. Now I don't want to be the fun police, and you can totally go blasting through mud and water and have a heap of fun like you see in all these RC promo videos. However, if you're a 12 year old who has spent their last two birthdays and three Christmases saving up for this RC car, I'd think twice before ripping through mud and puddles. Because if you don't clean and maintain it properly afterwards, you'll be spending the next couple of birthdays and Christmases buying replacement parts, which can be a bit of a buzzkill. Check your wheel nuts after each run to avoid stripping the hex or wheel out. This is kind of a big one. If your car didn't come with a wrench like some do, they are cheap enough to buy, as little as $5. This is also the cost of a set of plastic wheel hexes, but with less downtime. A set of wheels, however, can easily be $50, $80, $100, all for the sake of a $5 wrench and 30 seconds of checking. It's worth mentioning that you can over tighten your wheel nuts and damage the plastic wheel hex or stress your wheel axle, which can result in binding your wheel to the hub or snapping axles. I do them up firm, but not super tight. And after tightening, make sure the wheel spins freely. The best wheel nuts are flanged serrated nylock nuts. So if you do lose one or you just want to upgrade, go for these. When you get a wheel wrench, you might want to get some tools as well. Either a set of single drivers in the common 1.5, 2 and 2.5 sizes, or even some speed tips to go in your electric screwdriver, like these. Having the right tool for the hardware on your car makes every maintenance job just so, so much easier. Check your grub screws. Although they're small in size, these little grubs have big responsibilities when it comes to keeping your RC running. And with great grub power comes great grub responsibility. Don't judge a grub by its thread size. This grub's bite is bigger than its bark. The early grub gets the bird. Okay, that last one didn't really work, but your car's grub screws certainly do keeping pinion gears, drive cups and drive shafts in place and connecting them to other drivetrain components. This one might save you a $30 to $50 center shaft or pinion and spur set. Maybe your 4x4 is now only a two wheel drive. It's worth checking the grub screw on your center drive cups are tight. Look at this pinion gear not working because the grub screw isn't tight. So, check the little grub screws on your pinion gear, drive cups and drive shafts, if they have them, to make sure everything is tight and capable of staying on a shaft. Some $7 medium strength blue thread locker, like this, should keep everything in place where you want it. When replacing or tightening the grub screw, ensure it's tightening onto the flat spot on the shaft. Check your gear mesh. After a rollover or hard impact, the motor can move on the friction motor mount, both in or out, changing the gear mesh. This can easily strip both the pinion and spur gear, or simply make your car not go. Link to our video setting the gear mesh in your RC car can be found in the description. Check your bearings. Are they notchy, firm or gritty? If so, it's time to clean or replace them, preferably replace. A seized wheel bearing can create so much heat in the axle that the hub, hex and wheel all melt together into a big glob of expensive repairs. Unfortunately, I know this one from experience. Motor bearings. Brushless motors have two bearings. If the bearings on your drivetrain are notchy, firm to spin or gritty, chances are your motor bearings are the same. So check them before you destroy your motor. I know this one too. But with brands like Traxxas, Hobbywing, Plague and more doing replacement motor bearing kits, this job has become easy and cheap enough to do. Check for loose screws. Nobody wants their car to just fall apart, especially not in the middle of a bash on gravel where you'll never find the parts and screws that fell off. So make it a part of your regular maintenance and give your screws the attention they deserve before you lose them forever. Note, typically fine thread goes into metal. 
course into plastic and don't over tighten screws going into plastic. If it screws into metal, use a drop of that blue Loctite to keep everything tight. Keep your RC clean. A clean car is a happy car. Mud and dirt can bind up suspension, steering and drivetrain components and moisture causes rust and seized bearings. For how to clean your car in greater detail, we've got another video, again in the description. Endpoints and trims. Having your endpoints and trims perfectly calibrated maximizes performance and reliability of the electronic components and can prevent unnecessary wear and failure of steering systems. Again, YouTube video in the description. Check your tyres and make sure they are still glued onto the rims. However much a set of tyres for your car costs, like these Proline trenches at $137, that's how much you can save by instead getting a $15 bottle of tyre glue, and that will last ages. If you inspect your tyre bead and notice it's starting to come away from the rim, it's important you clean the two surfaces before applying the tyre glue. Um, microfiber and some metho does the job nicely. If it has one, check that the ESC thermo fan isn't jammed by debris. They need those fans to stay cool and may overheat or burn out completely without them. ESCs can be anywhere from $50 to $700. So yeah, probably check the fan is working. Unplug your batteries. No, the on off switch being off is not good enough. There's still a small amount of what we call parasitic drain happening. It's only a small amount, but given enough time, it will drain your batteries down to zero charge, ruining them. Even the cheapest of 2S batteries is still $40, but a high end 22.2 volt 6S pack will run you nearly $300. Also, let's talk about storage mode. LiPo batteries hate being at a low voltage for any reason. If you are leaving the batteries for a long time between uses, a smart charger with proper storage mode functionality is ideal. But if you only have the basic charger that came with the car, the next best thing is to just leave the battery fully charged. LiPo batteries have about a 5% self-discharge rate per month from fully charged, so if you can't storage charge them, full charge is way better than discharged. Lastly, don't overgear your rig. This is typically done by changing the motor pinion gear or spur gear, but changing your wheel's diameter also has the same effect. Let's measure the diameter of these two different wheels. If you go to bigger wheels, you really should look at dropping a couple of teeth on the pinion gear to compensate for the extra load. A lot of cars come with an included in the box optional high speed pinion gear. Yeah, these do make your car faster and are usually required to achieve the speed advertised on the box. What they don't do is make your car any more powerful. It's still the same battery, ESC and motor, but now it has a faster gear ratio to contend with. Think of it like riding a 10 speed bike. It's easy to start in first, but you don't go very fast. You go much faster in 10th but it's a lot harder to push the pedals. The same thing is happening to your car. High speed gears are intended for short bursts for bragging rights on a smooth surface and only a couple of passes. Try and use that gearing for regular bashing and you're going to burn something out. And that's all for this video. Hopefully these tips help you get the most out of your RC with as little downtime as possible. Don't be afraid to work on your own car. That's what you're supposed to do. Tinkering and maintenance is a big part of the hobby and a great way for you to learn all about your vehicle. If you think we've missed anything, let us know by dropping a comment. And a like and subscribe doesn't hurt either if you want to keep up with our latest videos. See you next time. Bye. Hey Aaron, have you seen the strawberry jam? Uh, no.